Hello, fellow fumblers, and welcome to another episode of The Film Fumbler Show, the show where four friends fumble through your favorite films. Today, we are reviewing Brokeback Mountain, a movie released in 2005 and directed by Ang Lee. So without further ado, my name is Adrian. I'm Taryn. Is it Alonzo? <laughs> Howdy. Oh, it's we, James. Special <laughs> guest. It's wow. because we didn't know which way to go because No, no, no you put no you we had it. We had it. I think Adrian you spoiled I, it, dude. I saw it. No, it was going to be James <laughs> and then special guest Alonso. Oh, Thank you for yeah. joining us today. Maybe I right, man. Man. Yeah, they he's been on the show before. You guys yeah. know. Him. Yeah, so. he's a seasoned veteran around here. All right, let's up, let's everyone? jump right into this one. Cheers to Happy Pride Month. Yeah, for Cheers, sure. guys. Cheers. With my new favorite shot glass from Washington. Mm -hmm. Stupidest Ooh. ass Bigfoot I've ever seen. Mmm. <laughs> mmm, mmm, mmm. Good whiskey. All right. Yeah, not Ooh. a sponsor. I'm rocking the uh, Hayes Parker Reserve. A little Never bourbon whiskey. Good. Nice. Very good. Very All right, good. so um, let's jump right into Brokeback Mountain. This movie, I, it's, it, I don't know. Like this movie came out when many of us were, what were we like in middle school? Middle school I think yeah. it was. Yeah, I was like twelve years old. So, I don't know. Like going into this movie, I think when it came out at that age, there was just like this this weird stigma of like, oh, it's the gay cowboy movie, you know, and never watching it. I didn't really know anything about it. So when we approached it for Pride, I was like, oh, is this going to be weird? You know, and but after <laughs> watching the movie, I was like, no, like this movie is I, I'm sad that I did that. I didn't watch it until or maybe I'm happy I didn't watch it until I was adult because I was like, no, there's there's so much here. And I don't know. It's it's definitely not like that gay cowboy movie for sure, especially yeah. after like, yeah. you know, experiencing it. So I'm, I'm genuinely really happy that we're talking about this movie. Dude, that I, we're doing this like I was in the same exact boat, dude. Like, that's all I've ever heard. It's the gay cowboy movie. Like, even like right. people, are like, oh, you're doing that movie? Just watch fucking gay porn instead or some shit. I'm like, oh wow. All these people have uh, never seen it. Uh, Obviously, have never yeah. seen it. It's like, come on, man. No doubt. Uh, no. So, Alonzo, I have a question for you. Did you see it in theaters? I did see it in theaters. Oh wow. Back in the day. So I heard that the trailer was very the original trailer. Apparently, they put out another trailer. It uh, hid all the implications of any kind of love between men. Did did do you know anything I, about I that? Don't, I don't remember the trailer, but I definitely knew. I mean, <laughs> I knew the premise. Yeah. Um, like going into it, um, so it wasn't it wasn't like a a total shock. And I I would say <laughs> even this. I think that um, when I, I remember watching it and thinking, like, it's like all the sort of talk and hype about it. And I remember watching and thinking, like, you know, there's really only kind of one sex scene. Mm -hmm. And I felt like, I don't know, from the talk of it, if, I felt like there would it would be a lot more. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. It would be a lot more sort of explicit, and it wasn't. So that was kind of actually surprising. Yeah. Um, Interesting. You know, yeah. But, but yeah, but I mean... Um, you know, it's like not too many movies that, uh, I watch where I like cry. Like I'm not one of those. Oh. I mean, I know, I know, like, I know, um, I know, for example, I know Jay, um, <laughs> cries for everything. Every cries for everything. Cries for every, <laughs> every movie. Yeah. I'm not that guy. Um, uh, but I, I mean, I think the ending for me, I, man, yeah. I was just like, I, I could not hold back tears. Like it was so intense. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, I thought it was, at the time, I thought it was a fantastic, I mean, I thought it was a fantastic movie. I, like, I, 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 I really love the soundtrack, the cinematography, and everything. Mm -hmm. Like, it's been, in, it's been interesting to rewatch it after all these years and, yeah. and a little bit more mm -hmm. perspective. So we got one crier, Adrian. <laughs> what do you got to mean? I, I'm just you asking, did you cry or not? No, yeah. <laughs> um, I, you did. I actually didn't, but uh -huh. there was, you know, there was that like tenseness in your throat when you're kind of holding it back a little bit. Choking and, up. Yeah, yeah, or you're choking up a little bit. But no, I, I didn't, I didn't actually cry. I don't know what I'm trying to think of, like what movies make me cry. And the one that comes to mind right away is um, the Florida Project. That movie makes me cry. Oh wow, yeah, but, I yeah, I think about the movie a lot. But 
this one i don't know i mean like there was it was so intense because like there are a lot of love stories where one of the partners dies and like you know it's very sad but this one just had that it had that added element where it was like this this like forbidden love this love that they couldn't they couldn't fully express only to themselves and like to have to hide that for so many years and to live this second life like i don't know it it was it it was really heartbreaking like i was very close to crying so i mean i i get i get it <laughs> dude, you I cried Taren, Taren. i fucking Taren. cried dude like so bad i was like i did not expect it to get me this bad like throughout the whole movie it's like <laughs> it's building and building but the end dude the last like 10 minutes or so mm -hmm. i was just right fucking teary-eyed choked up i was like jesus it would not yeah. stop dude i was like oh yeah, love it. Yeah. Yeah. Did you cry, James? I did not. I I, I think I lack that part of emotion in my brain. I just... Second question: Have you ever <laughs> cried in your life? Uh, I'm not no, sure. Never. I don't, I don't think that I'm capable of doing such yeah. things. I, I didn't cry. I'm this too time. much of a man. Tearbacks <laughs> removed. Of toxic masculinity, dude. No, I, I, I didn't cry this time. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, but, I mean, much. I mean, you know. But okay. Uh, yeah. So so I think the moment where I was like uh, it's 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 starting to get it's starting to get intense. It's starting to get the feels are here. Well, uh, I I guess we're going to jump ahead is is oh, when, he said, right, yeah. when when he when he said uh I don't know how to quit you. Mm -hmm. And and then I was like holy shit that's such a fucking good line. And then the camera cuts to Heath Ledger's fucking dumbass face. <laughs> And me and Jacqueline both started laughing. It oh, literally, no. it, his face was, he was just like, it was too much for me. And it, it, it made, it made us laugh. Dude, I'm that's sorry. So funny. And, and, that, and that's Dude. what's so weird is that, is that I was like, I, I think I'm going to be at, at, at an odds at, where I feel like the acting wasn't as good as I, as, as everybody thought. As everybody said it was, it, mm. it, I don't know. I just laughed, and I was like, holy shit, this ruined the most, uh, like, intense per part for me. And, like, dude, I just, uh, I had funny, to laugh. It's funny, because you were telling me that last night. You were like, dude, there's that, you were telling me that story, basically. Yeah. And I was fucking and looking you for cried. it. No, it wasn't. That's <laughs> But I was yes, you know, looking okay, for that okay. face the whole time, and I never saw it. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. He was just like, he was like, the, the lips like were so tight. He was just like, you know, this is <laughs> like, um, we started laughing. And it yeah. was like, we fucked in the head that we're laughing at such a intense part of the movie. Like, it was probably like the pivotal like his face looked the same the whole movie. I don't know. Dude, I didn't see it. That's that's the face. Just that so face. Much, dude. That face is the face you would make if you ever cried. <laughs> yeah, 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 because, because I don't know how to express my the emotions. Just like Ennis, right? Like, yeah. like he's 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 so afraid to even have an ounce of of emotion, and mm -hmm. that's why he's that's maybe that's why his face was so fucked up. That's yeah, probably what I would know look how like. to do it. So maybe it's accurate, but like I was just like. <laughs> I was like, oh my god! I was like, there. This is. It, it took me out. I was like, Damn. I was ready. That's I was ready funny. for it. I was. I, I was willing. For, willing for it, but. Yeah. Yeah. I no, I, I agree. Like, so reading up on this on this film a bit, I just like you. There's so much about like the acting performances, especially like Heath Ledger, and I don't know. I mean, I'm kind of in between. I think that like a lot of it was was really really good, but there was just those constant facial expressions that looked. Like he had just eaten something really sour or something. It was just that I don't know. He's got a weird style, though. I mean, think about all the other movies he's in that he's been sort of well known. Well, I mean, like the the you know him playing the Joker with all the makeup is kind of hard mm -hmm. to see, but it's mm -hmm. kind of a bizarre performance. Do you know? I mean, it works because it's the Joker, but I think uh, I don't know. It was yeah. it's kind of really out there, and I mean. I don't know. I, I don't know if you've seen a bunch of his other movies, but I haven't really. He, he's like he's like one of those actors that I think, like he's like kind of like Brando, where like he just knows how to go to this kind of very real place, mm. but mm. it's very masculine, you know. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> um, and and so it's not like you know he'll go like to it's like an extreme place, but then he'll kind of settle back to like a sort of middle of the road, not making too many facial expressions sort of place. 
Like I, I think in comparison with him and Brando is like, um, is is on point. If I'm, I did, I totally forgot he was even fucking Australian. I didn't know that. Kind until of I like saw mind today. blowing. I was like, I'm like, oh, it might. I need to hear his voice. <laughs> Dude, for being yeah, Australian but... and then doing that voice, and I don't know. I just, I think it's very impressive. I liked it. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I, I think, I think all the performances. Um, I think Michelle Williams is really, really good in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, dude, Mary I think, Tricky, yeah, I think uh, Randy, I Quaid, Randy Quaid in this movie. I, I mean, I don't know if you guys. That kind of that. took me out. I was like, I don't. This is the guy really? from fucking Vacation. This is weird. From Christmas Vacation. Yeah. He's cousin the whatever brother. the fuck. Cousin Eddie. <laughs> cousin oh, Eddie. Oh wow. Oh my gosh, I didn't he, even realize he that. in this movie? He, he, was the ranch, he was the ranch boss. He was the, the guy that owned the, boss the, the ranch oh. property. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't catch that. Oh, didn't, I recognized yeah. it right away, and I was like, I don't like this. Me too. <laughs> I, don't Me too. Like I this forgot he was in the movie. I mm. forgot oh, he was wow. in the movie. In the Fumbliverse now. Yep. Yeah. In, <laughs> yeah. Randy Clay. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but to go back, yeah, to go back to, like, Heath Ledger's performance, I think that like reading through Jake Gyllenhaal and Heath Ledger's kind of take on the characters and and their sexuality is like neither of them really said like oh yeah these two these two men are like actually gay i think it was like they both kind of said that like these are two straight men who kind of just fell in love with each other and and Heath Ledger said something you know real nice about like these are just two souls that fell in love rather than like you know them being actually gay or not and so there's a lot that's kind of left for interpretation there where I don't know it, it's it, like at what point is just like them hiding who they really are like are they really really gay or and that's the, I don't know that's what's kind of different is because I think like for me I think uh, Jack's character or Jack is like leaning definitely a little bit more towards like him actually being gay rather than Heath feels like he's just in love with Jack or, or rather yeah. Ennis is just in love with Jack yeah yeah I mean, you know. he says it's like a one-time, you know, this is a one-time thing. I'm not queer, you know, kind of in the... Uh, they both the, say it, yeah, yeah. 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 And, Neither am I. <laughs> but, yeah. and, but, I mean, okay, so let me, I think, maybe it'd be helpful to take us back in time. Yeah, let's go um, back. So, is that how far back we're back going? In your days. Was, back when I was, <laughs> I was around and you guys weren't, no. But, I mean, just, like, think about it like this. Like, I feel like, you know... The sort of sexual identity was like a far more defined thing and like a polar thing like back then. So like, like you were either gay or you're straight, right? Mm -hmm. And that's it, right? And then right. there was no room in the middle. And like, I remember growing up, like the idea of like a bisexual was like, nah, you're really gay. Yeah, there right? wasn't a spectrum as there is. Right, right, right. And so, so I think that to make this movie kind of palatable to a mainstream audience, which I think was the whole point of this movie, was to try and get a mainstream audience, yeah, right? True. They had to sort of play around with that stuff in a way that they probably didn't really have the language for that back then, especially in the mainstream mm. like they do yeah. now, right? So yeah. like, so yeah, like, I mean, I think probably now we would consider them bisexual or, you know, somewhere in the mm -hmm. spectrum like that. And but back then they had to be gay because they were doing, you know, like they were having a gay relationship. Right. Right. And that was it, you know, like they're gay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's so, so interesting is like, it feels like everyone, even just like the production, like the actors, the director, all these, the writer and stuff, like they all have different takes on that part of it. And like, ultimately like the moral, I guess, is like that it doesn't fucking matter. And like, Whoever, whatever right. you think it's it is it's like that's how you interpret it right like it doesn't really matter one way or the other it doesn't mean need to be an answer you know i thought that was really they did that really well no yeah and and like i think that's that's with any good movie is like so much is kind of up for interpretation it's just like how, how like the fact that you're you're feeling about it and you're thinking about it and you're trying to make heads or tails of it like and people can have different opinions on it is like i think is is a good film and like it just brings a lot of great conversation to the table. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, this movie I mean, did that well. I mean, when I saw it, um, yeah, like, okay, I'm, I'm probably not the, the normal audience in that. Like, I've seen a lot, like, before that, I've seen a lot of European movies. And in Europe, they were a lot more comfortable with showing, like, gay sex acts or gay relationships or anything like that. 
and there, it wasn't it wasn't like anything like special or whatever. Uh, you know, American Americans are a lot more conservative about that stuff. So mm-hmm. I remember watching it at the at that time. Yes, there was all this stuff. It's the gay cowboy movie, which, by the way, I mean, I don't know if this is a hot take, but basically every like every Western is kind of a gay cowboy movie, in my opinion. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> honestly. I mean, if you really think about the plots of those things. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, like, it was, yeah, it was the gay cowboy movie. Uh, and there were all these, like, sort of jokes about broke back this and whatever. Yeah. But I think it was, a, it was one of the first movies, American movies, to make, allow, like, straight people, like, truly empathize, right, mm. with people that were having a gay relationship. Yeah. And and I can only speak for myself that like, you know, like it's definitely it, it, it gives you a different perspective it, at the time. It gave me a different perspective or it helped me get a different perspective. Mm, like, yeah. I don't think there's anything that replaces like empathy. Right. Mm. <laughs> like you could read about something and in theory believe something. But then like when you go through some sort of emotional experience where you gain empathy, I think it's a, it, it changes everything. Right. And so and, and I think that was the point of the movie. I really do like. Because if you think about it, the director's straight, the, the actors are straight, the yeah. writers are straight. I think the original writer of the short story is straight. And it's I, a full novel, I think. I believe it's a full it's a short story. Uh, yeah. I, is I, it I a short story? Remember. Yeah, short story. I, yeah. Oh, okay. I can't I remember. I can't remember, but um, one of the writers, just a little tangent, one of the writers of the movie is a guy named Larry McMurtry, who did Lonesome Dove. And um, I don't know if you guys ever watched that. It was like a kind of Western miniseries back in the day. And then also did The Last Picture Show, which is like one of the best American movies probably ever. But anyway, I think like this movie was meant for a straight audience and it was meant to engender empathy. And I think, damn, it it, it just knocked it out of the park when it comes to that. Um, because, you know, again, as you know, as a straight guy at, at that time, like, you weren't really seeing that kind of stuff yeah, in mainstream yeah. media. It just didn't really exist. Yeah. I think it definitely did open that door. Yeah. To... That's what, that's one of the things like going back to like when we want, we're going to uh, talk about doing this movie. I was like, fuck, is that like, like the stereotypical gay movie or whatever. But like, dude, this movie did like mm. so much for like just LGBTQ, like in general, like it fucking was like a launching point for Hollywood to like actually mm. be okay with this stuff. It's like very, yeah. it's like super important fucking movie. Yeah, it, kind of sadly because it, well, I mean, it's great that it did so well, but it was just like Hollywood's like, wait a minute, there's money in that too? Because yeah. this movie's budget was so low, like so freaking <laughs> low. The budget for this, I mean, and it, it was 14 million and it made 178 million in the box office. I mean, it made back its budget in the first week of pre screening. Damn. Like, <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, like it, it just, it's did so so well but Mm -hmm. i mean i mean yeah it it is it is a a movie for like the straight audience i I would kind of agree with that alone so that like yeah 14 million i mean but think about it like who they had to pay what the director the actors yeah the cg no obviously it's a low budget yeah the the sheep um (laughs) wyoming the state of wyoming i guess they filmed yeah. in Canada, but it, it looked, uh, it looked you, okay, a so lot like Wyoming. Wyoming. Yeah. Mm. Damn. Mm. Let me just say one of the most beautifully shot movies I've seen in quite a while, um, and yeah. it really makes you understand the value of like shooting on film and good cinematography and wide angles. I mean, mm-hmm, I don't yeah. know. It looked it looked beautiful. I mean, colors were beautiful. Yeah, you know, <laughs> the wide angle into like the very intense uh, close-ups into Heath Ledger's face. <laughs> into the <it's> close-up. A... <laughs> Damn, you actually do it pretty well. You know, maybe you should practice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. yeah so no, I, but... I mean, I'll oh, go ahead. No, you, you you take it. Um, like kind of going on what Alonzo was saying, just like giving giving straight people empathy i i i i jokingly asked you to bring your brother on the show oh yeah I, I'm like, my brother, I'm like yeah. I, uh, yeah who is a, a gay yeah my brother yeah, yeah. yeah yeah and um i was just like i don't know any gay people and and like i i i the, the more i kept digging into this movie the more i just like want to know the gay perspective on this like 
we're we're four straight white males here and mm -hmm. i i just i just want to i i just want to dive into somebody's head you know or yeah. into one of their heads and 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 kind of just get like what did they feel about it was was it was it an accurate representation you know this is this is written by straight people how right it it, it could be very far fetched or just i don't know could yeah. just not be accurate and i, I was Parts kind of, of reality. Uh, yeah, I was kind of just wondering about just yeah. just just different stuff like just I don't know. Yeah, I, just, I, read, I wanted to I, pick somebody's I, brain. I, I read some articles like from from people who were gay like and they I don't know, like some of the ones that I read they seemed pretty much a, approving of this. I think one thing that I did see was that how we were talking about earlier how like the lines are a little bit blurred on whether or not like on where their sexuality is. Uh, one yeah. one that I saw was just like these these guys are gay. Like it was just like the, Hollywood mm -hmm. kind of pitched that into the, like having these blurred lines to kind of make it a little bit more palatable mm. for the straight community. But mm. but I mean again, it, I think it is still up for interpretation. I, so so yeah. I I did I did a little bit you know I didn't quite fumble it. I did a little bit of research coming ahead mm. of this. So one of the things I think that um, gay folk objected to at the time was just the lack of representation by queer people, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh. you know, again, like just in terms of the, you know, the people that made the movie, the people that were in the movie, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, I think another thing was, um, and I think it's, it's just interesting to think about now in 2021, but there were some sort of objections to these sort of tropes in the story that are common in stories about gay people like for example like just the, the violent sort of death at the end and um you know the kind of the violence sort of sprinkled through the movie and like the way that um you know this kind of like forbidden love sort of trope that's like pretty yeah. again pretty common like there were I... other movies that came out around that time um what's the movie with hillary swank um uh oh man i can't remember the name of it off the top but uh boys don't cry i think it had some similar themes right and so like i think that was like the just the objection of like like hey you know like it's the same kind of stuff and mm -hmm. and also that it was really kind of made for a straight audience right yeah i, I think yeah. all those things um I, but go ahead go ahead i don't know it's just it feels like it's obviously way too late. 2005 is not that long ago, but like it had to kind of start somewhere. I feel like even if it was kind of yeah. tropey and like yeah. mm -hmm. getting like straight actors and stuff, like I don't know if it was made today, then I could see those a lot easier. You know, those critiques of it. Yeah. But like yeah. back then, it's like I don't know. You had to do something, right? Like yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's our first go at this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And 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 it's and also actors like... took it seriously. Like they weren't. You know what I mean? Like reading about they, their yes. their. Uh, preparation and stuff is like they were fucking in it dude they yeah fucking they really did like Heath Ledger specifically yeah yeah Heath Ledger specifically like he had a little bit of uh, I don't know what you would call it maybe like fear of going into the role not because because it was playing a gay character but he he didn't feel like he was mature enough to fit that role properly in his yeah. acting career which is like dude, he was 28 when this he filmed at 27 something dude, like died, that he died, he died, he died hell young, man. yeah 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 yeah, so um, he was yeah. I mean, five, and, yeah. and also, this movie is the story is about two guys in Wyoming, you know, like in the '60s. At least yeah. it starts out in the '60s. Yeah, these things were not out in the open mm -hmm. um, at all. I mean, you know, and and even remember the the part where Ennis is telling Jack about how his dad made him see the this the corpse of a man yeah. who was who was sort of discovered and. Right and you know murdered like yeah you know so i mean i think it's at least true to the idea that like anyone trying to do these things back then would have been in terrible danger you know right like, they were I mean, risking their lives literally like to to express who they really were you know and, and, at, and the, at, at the end of the movie right uh you know we could probably i don't know if we want to skip to talking about what may have actually happened to jack mm -hmm. um but it's certainly strongly hinted at that, you know, he was murdered. Um, yeah. Much oh, in the was, same yeah, way sure. that, you know, much in the same way that uh, 
uh, that the person that Ennis was talking about, you know, as a kid. Yeah. So, and I, I don't know. I think that's like, I think that's why we have pride today is like, I've heard from, I've heard from like, like comments from people, from younger people, like in their very early twenties that are gay today that are just like, well, I don't, I don't understand why we have pride. Like, you know, like, and they're gay and it's just like, you, like, you should be so thankful that you don't have to worry about being able to express who you are. Like, because back then in, you know, the 60s, 70s, 80s, like people were literally killed for it. And not that it, not that it never happens today. Right. But yeah, we're in such a different climate that like, I don't know, I, I fully understand why we have pride because there, it's, it's for these, these people to be able to like openly express who they are and, and be proud of who they are. And they just, they didn't have that back then. Right. So, you yeah. know, these people, we have pride today is because like people like you today who are, who are early twenties and gay you're living a lot easier of a life than they were. Not to say yeah. that there's not struggles for sure. And this is coming from a straight white passing man, but, yeah. but you know, it's, it's true. Like, yeah. Well, you know, Adrian, I think another thing that this movie does a really great job of is it shows you what, like the kind of the waves and rings of like sadness of like keeping the secret and how mm, it affects yeah. everyone in their lives. Yeah. Right. Right. Like yeah. it's not just them. It's, you know, it's Ennis's wife who mm -hmm. just doesn't, is feels betrayed, right? right yeah. Um, and, and it, like, the, this, like, having to sort of keep it this secret thing and not being able to be, you know, out with it, um, it destroys not just their lives, but other people's lives. But, you know, he, there's times, I think, where Ennis is, like, sad that he doesn't, you know, especially after they get divorced, he, you know, he can't spend much time with his daughters. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so it's like they got divorced as a result of Ennis having this thing, at least indirectly. Mm -hmm. And then that affects his relationship with his daughters. Right. So mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, that's what this, and, that, and, and I think Adrian, I think you make a really fantastic point uh, about, about pride and the idea of being able to be out and, um, live your life um you know without fear or at least with less fear is that the the truth of the you know the keeping of secret and keeping it like you know occulted from everyone it has real consequences on everyone right mm -hmm. and it's not just them it has real consequences i mean you i've yeah. seen i remember growing up where i knew gay kids that were kicked out of their families yeah right so like what what is like the what is like so it's like you destroy a kid's life, but then you destroy that family. Yeah. Right. Right. For, and for what? So, so I, I know, I think it's a fantastic point. It's really, it's, yeah. And, 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 and not to say that, job. not to say that, that, that doesn't still happen. You know, there are still like a lot of those families that exist that, that are very set in their ways and like what their values are and that don't accept their children for being gay. Like that, that does still happen, I think. But today I think it's just like, it, it definitely has to be too, a very lesser degree than than what it was then you know and it's it's not you know it's not like we're done like yay we cured we we like we cured gay pride like we cured being gay or we cured like racism you know like anything any one of those things it's it's it's, it's this it's this progress that we have to like keep going forward from here right there's still work to be done but yeah um we've we've come a long way i guess is what i mean i mean oh, you yeah. know le le i mean like think about what you know what has happened from 1963 to now in terms of you know, for example, you know, gay marriage, things like that, where where people can actually have real lives, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Real lives as, as like, you know, a couple and, and build a life with someone else without, you know, all the secrecy. I mean, that's those are real things. Those are real things, yeah. you know, and, um, and so, so yeah, I, I, yeah, again, like, I think this movie like it shows, it shows all the consequences. And it's, it's like profoundly a sad movie about like regret, which yeah. how, again, how do you pull, like that's really hard to pull off. I mean, there's so many movies. I mean, again, I wasn't taken out of it by um, Heath Ledger. Oh, Heath Ledger. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, honestly, James, it's so funny you said it. Cause like, I don't, I remember watching the movie and I was like in, I was just like yeah, so in. in. Uh, and like, yeah. but, but, you know, like at the end, I just came away. And again, this is, you know, 
like yeah you know straight guy like at the end i came away with that was a sad movie about like regret and yeah and that then that's the way it connected with me at the you know at the end uh -huh. of the day and, and to pull and, that off damn how yeah. do you do that so hard and maybe and maybe it's just me like i'm i'm so impatient sometimes with people and hmm. and i get i get easily annoyed when somebody can't make up their mind and it was an entire movie of them yeah. <laughs> not being able to make up their mind and so i was just like so frustrated and everyone and and like i don't know i was just trying to read more about it and it's like well mm -hmm. it's because it was 1963 like yeah. and i was like okay okay i guess <laughs> and i was like but can't they just like do it on the side like can't they like i don't know like it well, was they just do i mean yeah they i know do. They, they high altitude fucks yeah right and like it, and and i'm just like i'm like ennis just figure it out and like and he doesn't want to he doesn't want to even like try to like really actively pursue anything he, he's never the one that goes and visits jack ever it's just it's it's like this one yeah, it's so one one track road and 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 it's just so frustrating for me to watch and i think that's maybe <laughs> why it like took me out a little bit just because yeah. i don't know my personality yeah. but, but like, just, like, these... I was like ah, these guys are fucking stupid but i feel like, <laughs> they, like they set up why he couldn't pretty well like that i never exactly. thought yeah, i mean yeah he has he has a kid but but it almost felt like jack didn't give a fuck about his shit he was like willing to just like let that go but he, ennis he's... was way more well okay so how did they how did they, in, how, did they how did they how did they grow up to his family right like how did they grow up right like you know like ennis's parents died at a young mm -hmm. age he was raised by like i think he had probably lower expectations for life yeah you know, he mm -hmm. grew up like way worse off right yeah yeah than jack it seems like yeah um and like i don't think he i think he just kind of thought well you know i'm just gonna do what i can and that's probably good enough you know yeah. because yeah and and like where whereas jack like i don't think he grew up he, he i mean when you see his parents house at the end you're like well fuck he didn't grow up yeah <laughs> he didn't grow, he grow up, up nice either uh but but at least he gets to like you know he he marries the girl and marries into the kind of rich family and I think he starts like dreaming and imagining like hey this it could be something else like i could have this other life yeah whereas like ennis is just like stuck and yeah. you know again not to get away from the sort of nature of the relationship but i totally know people like ennis right it, from the standpoint of just people that have low low expectations and, like they don't they can't imagine like you know they can't you can't better. imagine doing anything bigger than what they do even though it's like actually pretty attainable yeah right yeah 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 mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> nice no, that's... <laughs> that's a good point um <laughs> yeah um so an interesting thing um so the the author oh what is her name any pro any pro uh I, I saw this interview of her where she was kind of talking about where she came up with a story for this film or not not for the film but for the short story that she wrote and it was like this super interesting thing she said she was i think she was actually in a bar in wyoming and she was watching these all these cowboys playing pool off in the corner and she saw one of the one of the cowboys he was like an older gentleman maybe in his 60s but you could tell that like he was still you know actively working as a cowboy and he was just standing off in the corner and just kind of watching everyone play pool and she said there was this like expression on his face or like this this look in his eyes that was she couldn't quite put her finger on it but like it was like almost of like regret and that she kind of thought like well maybe he's maybe he's gay like maybe he's a gay man who's you know kind of lived his entire life a lie in, in in a sense and that kind of touches on your point alone so it was just like regret and like him looking and just being like what like what could have been but what couldn't have been because of the of the world that he grew up in and so she kind of just pondered that for several months and then came up with this story wow. so that, that definitely ties back into like the straight person's perspective on 
a gay relationship or like people you know that kind of thing and i thought that was like definitely interesting to just how this story came about like it just definitely it, it like makes sense it, it makes sense for i don't know yeah. so th there was a another movie i saw i think it came out like maybe four or five years earlier i think i saw it when i was in high school there's a movie called but i'm a cheerleader have you guys ever heard of that or seen that I've heard of it. I haven't. I haven't seen it though. So it's with um, Natasha Lyonne, who's in the, that uh, series Russian Doll. Yeah. But this is before she did a bunch of heroin and stuff. <laughs> but anyway, <clears throat> so yeah. and it's about a girl who's a cheerleader and kind of inadvertently sort of discovers that she's a lesbian, mm -hmm. and she's in like this very conservative family, and so they put her in this like gay conversion oh, camp. No. Um, and like and like and skimp. yeah but so and and but the tone of that movie is totally different like totally different actually the tone of that movie is like kind of a little bit funnier and sillier mm. I, I know I, I don't know how to explain it exactly but it i don't know yeah. if you guys remember like you guys did edward scissorhands right yeah yeah yeah. yeah so like do you remember kind of the scenes with the like housewives and like the crazy colors and like 50s art deco whatever yeah, that yeah. Stuff? it was kind of like that it had that kind of vibe mm. you know what i'm saying so and and i just I, I was thinking like that kind of movie is like a lot more common now i mean maybe not the plot but like just the sort of tone with gay characters and gay themes yeah. or sexual identity themes it's because, more playful. It's like it's like a it's teen, like, it's, it's like, teen movie it's like an thing, awkward. Right? Yeah, you're you're awkwardly trying to figure out who you are. Whereas this one's like, dude, shout out to I can't one's... be who I am. Yes, yeah, yeah. 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 It's 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 a. Uh, I mean, but again, uh, but but I'm in a cheerleader set in the suburbs, in like the '90s, and this movie's set in the '60s in Wyoming. You know, and 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 what's interesting to think, I, like, let me just add to this, like. Every cowboy movie is actually a gay cowboy movie. I'm oh. curious about this, actually. <laughs> I know. We got to go. Well, okay. This. Like, like, so a lot of, okay. So I thought they were the epitome of, of manly men. I thought it was like, it's like the ideal of what you, what you strive to be as that's an American. The, that's the hilarious thing, right? Because <laughs> a lot of those movies are about like two guys that have trust and honor, but something happens and then they have to kind of go at each other. <laughs> but like, it's like, these are like, kind of like love stories that are like, just layered with like violence. It's like replace the sex with violence. <laughs> and a lot of times you have like, Ugh. you have a Western. Interesting. Um, I mean, like look at John Wayne movies. It's a lot of times when like the villain is like someone he actually is friends with or has a deep respect for, but like, things out of their control like get to where they have to kind of go at each other mm -hmm. and then at the yeah. end sometimes like at the end john wayne beats him but like either maybe takes mercy on him or he accidentally <laughs> slips his his, his <laughs> penis into I mean, it's, him it's, it's, a, it's a lot of those movies where it's like you watch them now and like you take your mind out of that like whole like macho 50s thing mm -hmm. and like you realize like I mean, how do you express these stories in any other way back then, right? It's like, you have to layer in the violence. <laughs> yeah, interesting. it reminds me of like, oh. Faster, like, the if they weren't brothers, <laughs> I was like, these guys love each other so much, and like, but they're just oh, gonna, yeah. they didn't, they just needed to slap the brothers part on there so that like, they can be interpreted that way, I guess, but I feel like that's similar to what you're saying, right? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of war movies where it's like, similar too, right? Where it's like, you know these guys are soldiers in the war and they're like you know they're brothers to the end they protect themselves you know protect each other from like the bad guys or whatever and you know i mean in war movies there's no room for sex there's no room boys for boys being boys <laughs> guys, guys being yeah. guys just yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so so like to me like the idea of it, it's the gay cowboy movie is hilarious because I think they're probably all gay cowboy movies. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> On some level, you know. Huh. Um, so I'll let's, take. I want to shift gears a little bit to kind of a question where the, the conversation that happens between Ennis and uh, Anne Hathaway's character, Jack's wife, 
where she's telling him, On I think phone. Ennis is in a phone booth. Yeah, where she's telling him that he was killed. Um, I read this thing that was really interesting. So Anne Hathaway, she did two two separate takes for this scene. One of the takes was uh, the wife definitely knows that Jack was gay and that he was having a gay love affair with Ennis. And the other take is that it was just a tragic accident and that's it. And they didn't use either take in its entirety. They spliced both of them together. Oh, dude, I, you could Good. tell. I was wondering about There's that. I feel like so much tell. ambiguity yeah. in that scene that. where I, like, I remember I was, I was watching it with my girlfriend, Samantha, and I was just like, does, does she know? Like that? She knows she's so gay. like straight face. Things. It's like, why does she not like torn it's up very, about this? It, yeah, it's, it's so yeah. weird. But well, I don't know. I wanted to know what you guys thought about that. Yeah, no, great, great. I, I think this is a really critical scene because it is so open to interpretation. Okay, so let me remind you guys earlier in the movie, I think Ennis asks Jack, like, hey, is everything good between you guys? Does she know? And he's kind of like, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he doesn't really. He's yeah, like, no, 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 I don't think so. But, yeah. but like, but, but then at some point he says, like, the relationship I have with her is like, it could be, could be happen. It could, our marriage could be uh, could happen over a phone call or something. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So like, so like, you know, I, I mean, okay. My interpretation. This is a really interesting thing that the two takes were spliced, and I think that's actually such a like a good. That's call. really like, what a masterful yeah. like call. But, I mean, the from from watching it, I I felt like, like she suspected but didn't quite didn't quite know and never really had proof but also maybe didn't care as much at the time and it was you know, like, like it felt spiteful like she was like i'm not gonna give you the satisfaction knowing mm. the truth i don't know you know i don't know I don't, I don't know i didn't feel like that i felt like i don't know no, that's, I didn't feel like it was spiteful. I felt like it was, she was just annoyed. Like, you know, because he's, a, Jack is established as being a pain in the ass to their family, right? To her family, right? Like her, you know, her, her father, father doesn't, yeah. doesn't respect him yeah. and whatever. And like, he's a rodeo you know, he, cowboy. He's not a real cowboy. Right. right. And he just gets annoyed, gets annoyed at him. And so like, I wonder, and you know, like she's always being shown like counting up money, basically. Mm hmm and so, like, to me, it's like, she's all business, you know, yeah. like, she's all business. And, like, this whole thing is kind of an annoyance. Yeah. She, they lost their best combine salesman, maybe. Oh, you know? yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's funny. I feel like I'm, like, kind of on your side, James. Like, the, just her delivery and, like, her just, like, apathy or whatever, you know, like, she just didn't give a shit. Yeah. Pathetic. Yeah. yeah. Like, she breaks don't... a couple times, though, right? Like, there's a couple times where you... He says something and she kind of pauses and yeah. When it's like when it spices in like the scene, like the shot of him getting fucking beat down or whatever, it's like mm -hmm. yeah. I assume that's the truth, and I like the way that she just the way she's talking. It makes me feel like she was part of it. Maybe her dad fucking did this. He found out or something and had that. Happen maybe not part her. of it, but like no, but what. Yeah. What it was was that remember they they had met up again and he and Jack told Ennis that he was trying to make a pass at Anna Ferris's husband. Remember? Right. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Is that oh, so Anna because Ferris, I was yeah, that yeah, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. and that's the okay. dude from what is it? Uh, Stranger Things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah. So, mm -hmm. so he remember they were like, oh, maybe you know, I have this place, maybe we could go fishing together, yeah. and so he he he, he made a pass at him. Yeah. And it probably went. Yeah, sideways. maybe like she wasn't like had a hand in it, but like maybe she knew it was going to happen and like didn't stop right. it. She just yeah. had that vibe, and it was. Or knew yeah. afterward, maybe. Yeah. Something. I don't know. Oh, yeah, it's, it's it's hard. I, but that's, I mean, again, another sign of a great a great scene, right? Where like all of us kind of come away with like a slightly different version of like what happened. Like, see, I don't know that it happened necessarily. Like. I think it's clear that he imagined that's the way it happened. Ah, right? like the way it's the way it's cut. That's, that's what I read too. Like, that some people think, and 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 he's imagining it because he's already has that, that in his happened, head from yeah. when he was a kid. 
Exactly. So right. he's just imagining it could happen. Holy shit! I but didn't I even think, think about it. That I, way. I think it's. I think it's pretty much it happened. I, I mean, yeah. you I could think happened. those things. What? Because he was I so careless happened. towards yeah. the end of the movie about hiding it. Like mm-hmm. I just feel like mm-hmm. it's plausible. Yeah. No, I think. I think if I mean something happened. I think the way it was edited, it made me feel like Ennis is just imagining, like he's hearing the official version of the events and then he's imagining how it really happened. And right. that is yeah. colored by his memory of yeah. the yeah. dude from his hometown, right? So like- Yeah, it was kind of like the color in the scene was like dulled down like his other memories, right? So that- Yeah, yeah. and blurred. blurred. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. I, I, uh, I yeah. mean, again, dude, that, I mean, to me, those are some of the best scenes in the movie. Like, oh, those yeah. are some of the best scenes in the movie. Absolutely. Dude, that's yeah. the part, that conversation, I was choking up, but, like, when she said Brokeback Mountain, like, when she just said that, I was like, oh, fuck, and that got me, dude. That's, like, yeah. put me over the edge. I was like, fuck, man. That was rough. It yeah. really was. But it's interesting, like, because I, I, I like, James, that she said that maybe that was, like, how it happened in his head, and he was kind of, like, recreating that from, you know seeing that corpse in his childhood yeah because like that's that's kind of i think the big difference between ennis and jack is that like ennis is is so much more afraid of people finding out who yeah, they, the consequences who they literally seen has seen the, has know. seen the consequences and this yeah. and and jack was more just like hey like we can just live together we can have a cabin together like we could just be together and like yeah. how, you, how we were talking earlier about like Jack was putting in all of the the effort and Ennis kind of wasn't. And I think it was Ennis just being like, this is what happens. This is what can happen. And it was just like further solidified his fears of of that relationship. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's interesting. That I, I never thought that it maybe it was in his imagination, but I don't know. I still kind of do believe that, yeah, it, it definitely did. Uh, Jack was definitely killed because, because of his sexuality. Yeah. I remember what choked me up um, well, what made me cry was the very last shot of the movie, actually. What would um, remind me of? So it's, it's where it. where he's where he uh, where Ennis is visited by his uh, daughter, uh, yeah. who's telling him oh. that they're going that she's gonna get married, mm-hmm. right? And he asks her like, Are, you know, does he love you? And like, so to me, what, what does that mean, right? All that, what does that mean? I think it means that he understands that this sort of cycle is, is kind of broken in a way, right? Like where at least his daughter will get to be with- Somebody the that person. they love. Yeah, yeah. The, so, someone that they love, right? Yeah. Unlike him. And mm. then when he goes to the closet and he gets the, the jacket and the shirt- oh, don't even- and he looks, that. looks, and then, and you know, the shot is like, the composition of that shot is so beautiful. Out the window. Right? On the left third is that, and then you know, you see the field, the open field. Dude, that's that's definitely when I cried. I mean, it was so it hit because, you know, it's like, like I said, like it's like that. At least, at least the next generation won't have to kind of go through what he went through, but it still reminds him of like, you know, he he he. He wasted his life. I mean, I, I hate to say it like in that way because it's not yeah, like, but, like it's but like, like something, his fault. But something beautiful came out of his life still. Yeah. Like his with through his children. Like maybe exactly. he didn't live the life that he wanted, but he created something that could. Right. You know, so like, right, exactly. Rose has the concrete, right? I mean, and that yeah. I think is a that's so powerful, man. That's so powerful. Yeah. Like beginning of this movie, you know, it's like on second watch beginning of this movie kind of builds slow and yeah yeah and it's honestly like i'm surprised for an american movie it builds really slow like it's I a kinda, long film what is yeah. it like over two hours <laughs> yeah it's not sure i, I kind of thought like I, I just watching it now like i kind of wonder if a movie like that came out now if people wouldn't have tuned out you know <laughs> like already <laughs> Like like ten minutes in the movie, there's nothing happening. I mean, like, that's fucking like Thanos isn't like you know shooting lasers. Or something. I don't know. <laughs> it, it's more common, I think. Like even like Minari and shit. Like there's still a lot of movies that are like that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah I guess that's true. We're shift- but, yeah, the pendulum's shifting a little bit towards that again. People that want to see it know where to find it now. Right. <laughs> it's just like long, yeah. like long form podcasts. If you're listening to this very moment, 
you get it, right? Like, yeah. It's it's a long long slow, but we're, we're fucking nailing it right here. <laughs> get right there, Don't man. set him up too high for disappointment. <laughs> um, so another question that I, that I am curious is, did Jack's parents know? And to what extent? Mm, great question. I want to say they knew. I, I think they did. And, and that's what makes it even more kind of heartbreaking because you know that their their lifestyle would have been 100% okay there. Yeah. I don't know. You know would have been, well, would have I don't been know. It felt like his, his mom was seemed accepting of her son no matter what, but his dad is obviously yeah. fucking boomer cowboy guy that wouldn't be accepting you know, of that, right? I, see, that's I mean, the thing. Like, like, they're I don't definitely know. on I don't know that. I, I'd like to like interject with like some i guess i'd call it secondary personal experience of like we talked earlier about joe like about inviting my brother to be on the show so my brother is gay and i remember finding out about my brother being gay when i was like relatively young and i kind of remember like my dad's um i don't know like his uh emotion going into that like like of him knowing that that his son was gay like it it was it felt honestly a little bit like jack's dad where like i remember my dad saying things just like well you know it, it wasn't like he was just like oh like your brother your brother is like gay and like like nothing like really malicious but like there was this little inkling of just like oh well I don't know just just I don't, weird... I don't like it but he's still but my it son. is what it is it was yeah you know and like that has definitely changed like definitely changed over the years my brother just came back into town he lives out of state and he just came back into town actually a couple of weeks ago and like he brought his new boyfriend and like we had a, a family dinner and like i mean his his new boyfriend's amazing he's great and like my dad gets along with him well and like that's definitely changed over the years but like when I was young and when, when my brother kind of first came out, it was, it, it was, there was some weird animosity that was there. And I think maybe that's what Jack's dad was feeling. It's just yeah. like, well, maybe, no, he, that, he like, wasn't. That, like, beginning part of that kind of thing. Cause, cause yeah. like, his dad was like, oh, he, Jack's always had these crazy ideas. He's always, like, he's right. always been a little. Fantasizing a little about all this. A little weird to, yeah. to him, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And so, like, I don't think that his dad hated him i think he was it, it was absolutely just, not yeah it was just that it, it, and and him dying they probably knew what had went down mm -hmm. i think his dad is probably like well that's what happens too you know he had that yeah, kind, kind of same better, yeah kind of had that same mentality Which was Ennis, 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 yeah Ennis had you know it's just like well this is what happens yeah. to gay people yeah yeah and it was interesting that, like, so if if we are on the side that his parents did know, then Jack's dad couldn't go all the way in accepting Jack for who he was because he wouldn't give Ennis the ashes. To Just spread. a little bit, bro. I was so pissed. I was I was gonna say I was like, can't you? I mean, is this weird? But can't you just do half? I don't know. Like just a little handful. Oh, I don't know. Okay, come right. on. Yeah, watching pocket. It, yeah. Watching it the pocket second sand. time. Um, <laughs> Okay, did I imagine? Okay, so when Ennis is leaving, he's taking the shirt, right? The mom's got the paper bag ready for him to take. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Are some of the ashes maybe in the paper bag? Ooh. Oh, I, I don't. Oh, I, that would have been I, great if they showed that at the end of him. And it's just under there. I'm not claiming. I'm not claiming that. I would have fucked me but, up. But like dude. they had like a kind of knowing look. That's a missed opportunity, left. man. That's a missed opportunity. They had a knowing look when he left. Like, that like you know, I think it was like. Me, well, there's. Dude. It was like there's the blood. There's the blood, which is still yeah. a representation of the body. You know? And okay, so here's a beautiful Which was thing. Which totally creepy because didn't Jack steal that shirt from him? Yeah, he's like, oh, yes. I can't believe I left my shirt there. I, mean, I know, I, yeah. I didn't see when I first watched the movie. I didn't really notice that. Oh, I mean, I, 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 mean, I knew either. that he had the. I knew he had the thing at the end, but I didn't. Yeah. Catch that line that sort of explained. Which how was he got it. which was interesting at the end. Ennis still kept it in the closet. Oh, oh hey. wow! It was opening it Hidden in the closet. Pulling it out at the yeah. end. Yeah, hit it. And then here's he had another. It out. If you didn't cry while watching this movie, which I didn't, but if I had I known this fact while watching this on screen, I probably would have lost it. 
So when when Ennis first goes into Jack's closet, Jack's shirt is over Ennis's shirt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When Ennis yep. has the shirt in his closet, he switches it. Ugh. So now Ennis's shirt is over Jack. So Ennis is like holding, oh. and I'm just like, oh my god! I wish I knew that. I mean, I do know. It's that. fucked I up. That's yeah, good. I didn't that know that. Sure. That was good. 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 Which was, yeah. which was Heath Ledger's idea. He was just like this. Right. We need ah. to switch this. So like, uh -huh. ah, beautiful, beautiful. Well, okay. So let me let me ask you guys a question. When's the last time you guys have watched like an epic romance? Because this is what this is, right? Oh, this man. is like an epic romantic epic. movie. Yeah, I mean, because it's like over epic Howard romance. decades. Oh, that's right? that's big and important. Moonlight. <laughs> that's not really <laughs> Moonlight. Same. Yeah, Moonlight. Kind I guess moon. I guess Moonlight. Let's okay. our yeah, episode good, on Moonlight good. for that one. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. even like a straight, even if it, you know, without necessarily like the gay, gay relationship. Right. Well, yeah, that just happens to be about gay people, but that's, right. yeah, that's right. probably yeah, the last one. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Uh, maybe your name for me. I don't know. Mm. But yeah. maybe can, let's, let's get into, let's get into the romance, the romance mm. yeah. in the movie. Was Go it forward. romance? Was it lust? What was here? I mean, well, I that's what, both. that's what. That's what's so strange. Yeah, it, it definitely was both. And like, I think there is, you know, within love, there's a there's a healthy amount of lust, right? Like, mm -hmm. you love your partner in in the sense that you just want to tear their clothes off. But <laughs> right, I mean, gig me. Uh, <laughs> but um, oh, I forgot where I was going with that. But yeah, no, it, it was both. It yeah. was for sure both. And I think Jack. That's where I was going. I think Jack. That had that maybe more so than Ennis did because of his trips to Mexico to like hire you know male prostitutes. And I thought, and I thought that was like almost like too stereotypical that like the idea it took, that it took like away, it took away from I, their love romance. I think yeah, I it took away from their romance because it felt that part for me felt just stereotypical. Like I think some people have the notion that gay people are like sex crazed addicts, yeah. and I think that yes kind of took away from it like he wasn't a hundred percent in for ennis and he's like i have needs too yeah right and i'm just and i'm like thinking i'm like would i go like try to hire a prostitute if i was that like love starved like i don't know maybe that that's just not uh, yeah it's how hard i'm wired but 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 it's 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 the 70s it's the 60s like i like yeah. um yeah i don't know that that part kind of i i, I would wonder that that would be one of the things i would like to pick uh, a gay person's brain on like how did they feel about that because I felt like it was not in bad taste but I just felt like it was like a little retracting and and it did it did kind of hurt the romance for me we're like mm -hmm. I, I don't know and I was I was kind of wanting I, I, I thought the movie was too long a little bit for me there was parts where I was like okay I was like let's let's get more of why they love each other not how they love each other is it does that make sense sure like yeah. like I, I for me like i wanted i don't know i wanted like some pivotal like turning point when they were at brokeback mountain like i don't know for me like i, I would think like jack saving ennis's life from some bear or something like would <laughs> like would like i don't know solidify the romance and the love that they had for each other but instead we got them like wrestling and like doing like flirty stuff which was like i don't know i feel like their banter not, did not, enough for me like their they, they, what their banter they're what their banter yeah but like, like there's but so like, much and this was so reserved that we don't see like yeah i know but like i wish a lot I, even of time together yeah even though the movie was long-winded i felt like i i was missing that just a little bit and i and i and maybe that's why i was i am leaning like there's just a lot of lust here there's there's this, like fist fighting there's all this pent up emotions i feel like there is but it's not 100% lust i i, I wanted, wanted more high highs than the low lows that we got you know i sure. think i think does that make okay. sense i think that the i mean I, I say this like i don't think the lust cancels out the romance I mean, I think they kind of go, I mean, in many ways, hand in hand, like there can be lust without like a romantic 
element to it or right. at least missing mostly a romantic element to it but i right. don't think that's what this was i mean they wouldn't do that and i don't think it was that i think it ennis was just very very reserved yeah. and like yeah. the, the the reality they were growing up in was like very sexually conservative like mm -hmm. you, you put both those two guys like <laughs> let's say in somewhere in western europe around the same time where <laughs> those sort of things are like being are becoming a lot more accepted out in the mainstream yeah uh -huh. and maybe the story goes completely differently you know but like right right and like like the way the way that the relationship has to manifest is as this forbidden thing that they have to get away with get away from like the rest of the reality from yeah it's and like, like they have to do whatever they're gonna do quickly yeah it's like they, they did what they time. could i don't know it's it's tough i mean like it's like i understand how jack feels but i also don't blame ennis like like i said like like at the end you know with him like wasting his life that's too harsh that's not exactly what happened you know maybe he wasn't i don't know maybe he wasn't brave enough but like look what happened to jack yeah Right? He says like, that he, he what what is he promising at the end when he says I promise Jack. What is he promising? Mm -hmm. A life a, a a life from that point forward lived with no regrets? Maybe. Maybe maybe it's maybe it's sort of like a homage to being married or, when, or maybe when it, you, maybe when, you when you when you say I promise to somebody when you're getting married. Yeah. What did you guys? What, what did you guys take on that? I promise. Yeah, maybe it's to the, the the next generation, right? Maybe it's like, like, you know, I'm gonna do whatever I can do to make sure that the next generation doesn't go through what we went through, right? Like, like, and I'm not talking about like, I'm talking about his daughter. Yeah. Right. Like, I'm gonna support my daughter in this relationship that she has that's like born out of love. Yeah. Yeah. Make that uh, that's makes sense. One, one, like that. one idea, and I think it could have just been like a promise to just like Ennis's feelings towards Jack in general, you know, like it not to keep not to keep it uh bottled up and and push, but just I to mean, kind of like it, let Jack like know he was like, so bottled up, but just to let Jack know, like, you you know where I stand with you, like, you know that I do love you, but. I don't know. Like, I, I, don't, I think that like Ennis is just telling Jack, like, I don't know that we could ever have any any of the fantasy that you want, but like, I promise to you that I do love you. You know, like, and it's interesting. Know. Like, like Jack is almost like the happy go lucky friend that just like believes in everything. Yeah, and Ennis is just like, oh fuck, Jack, Jack yeah. fucking twist got got his whole fucking life figured out. He's got everything <laughs> figured yeah. out. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Well, okay, so I think I'm maybe, I mean, I don't know what, like, Albuquerque was like when you guys were growing up. Like, I think I'm probably the only one here that lived in, like, a v deeply conservative place in high school, right? Which I, I, I lived in West Virginia. And, like, I don't, I remember one person in the whole town, one person being out. One. Wow. And all kinds of things were said this person must have been the strongest person in the world to not get the hell out of dodge right but but you know as as i've gotten older a lot of people that i knew that I grew up with came out eventually right mm -hmm. oftentimes they had to like leave town and things like that or leave but a like, marriage and kids yeah, you know maybe yeah. yeah yeah so so you know one of the things i was thinking about adrian when you're talking about you know your dad and your brother right is like one of the things i remember growing up was this idea not one that i subscribed to certainly because like i had it i didn't grow up in west virginia and like i just spent that time in there yeah but like one of these ideas was like that if you have gay kids it's because you either you know molested them or some, oh, you allowed yeah. some something like that to happen because a lot of people mm -hmm. believe that a lot of people believe yeah. that that's that's how that's mm -hmm. gay people exist be, as the result of like some sort of molestation or something like that yeah it's just like a horrible terrible stupid you know remarkably ignorant thing to believe but i know that a lot of people believe that and so like if you had a kid that was gay like that 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 whole thing of like the suspicion of that 
mm -hmm. like became like kind of a scarlet letter mm -hmm. right and like so just to draw that all back or to even just that or even just that you failed as a father for exactly for raising a non-masculine son like exactly we see that it, when they're having the thanksgiving dinner where they're turning off the tv and the grandfather's like nah boy should watch football and That's he's just exactly. like no I we're eating you know okay. yeah you know it's just like that you know like yeah. well, what do you want him to be queer he's got to watch some football while he right you know? exactly yeah. well, that, that, those, those things were interesting because it was it was it was jack so jack had his over thanksgiving um where he's like fuck my he's, life i yeah. i have to be i have to be a father it almost seems like he's giving up on on the idea of being with ennis and he's like, no, I'm. I have to be a man, and I have to do the things for my family. So he tries to take, like, the head of of the family by by having that power struggle over the TV. And yeah, Ennis sure. has, and Ennis has that when he's with his family watching the the fireworks. Remember, he beats up those two biker dudes. Oh yeah. Because oh, yeah. because it's 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 that idea that this is what a man has to do, and he has to take a stand because they're they're at such odds with what they really want for me it's like they're overcompensating or something right i think i think for me that like i don't know those things can coexist like mm -hmm. you you can be a gay man and still have like yeah. very masculine like quote unquote masculine qualities where yeah. you'll stand up to the to your father-in-law you'll stand up to the bullies at the at the fireworks show like right. those things aren't independent of one another and yes so that's I, I don't know. I took it as just like these are you know this this just like further says that like yeah like sexuality and masculinity and femininity is like on the spectrum that you don't have to pick a side and just if you're gay you have to be a gay boy all your life and if you're straight you have to be a masculine man all your life. Yeah. Yes. Like where yeah. I, I feel like both examples didn't feel like super true to them though. Like I get what you're saying and I agree, mm. but it's like just okay. in these specific situations it felt like. They're putting on a mask, maybe. Yeah, they were trying. They were trying okay. to do something to make them look like something that they're not. I guess. Yeah. Um, you know, and this is just being confronted, like with the truth, right? And like, it is true that Ennis betrayed his wife, and hurt her. Yeah. yeah. No. Right? I, yeah. Like, yeah. Right. I mean, and yeah. and he has to kind of account for that. Um, yeah. But. Yeah. You know. No, I think those, those both those scenes are really interesting contrast i feel like the end the ennis part the ennis part of that felt completely real to me from the standpoint of someone that's deeply conservative reserved being confronted with the truth of what has what has been going on mm -hmm. and like how that sort of resulted in the situation they're in now yeah and you can tell that his wife still deeply cares for him and in this from the sense of like she just still feels betrayed. Yeah. Right. Rightfully right. so. That right. hurt. Yeah. That, that part. Yeah. That part hurt when when she's like, I wrote that note on the on yeah, your fishing cool. pole. She's I'm like, like that fucking. Right. That hurts. Like, that like tears in her hurt. eyes, like just trying not to like confront it. It's if like, I was in this fuck. situation, I would definitely punch some dude in the truck and all that. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, because but, I mean, at a certain point, it doesn't matter whether the person that they're with is a man or a woman; it's, they're still being unfaithful. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. So no, that's a um that's a really another great, really great intense scene. Okay, what about the what about the um the girlfriend that Ennis has later on? Like the dancer? I, the almost felt oh, yeah. like it wasn't needed. Yeah, maybe that was a little bit kind of I felt I don't like know. it I, wasn't needed. It was like him trying opinion. to move I mean, on and like he still couldn't do it. Like it I think yeah. it was necessary. But it was still like long winded, long winded yeah. for her to cry in the diner with him. Does, yeah. does his, There's does so many his, time does, skips that I don't know. I can't. Do, do there were his, a lot of yeah. It's hard to do tell how long know? they actually were together. I don't know. Do his kids know? Do I don't. His kids I don't. Know? I don't think, I don't think so. so. I, don't think, I think. I think the wife feels so much embarrassment that she would never like. Yeah. Okay, but Let there was that, that scene no. that maybe embarrassment, That's... but also protection, right? Like also a certain yeah. level of just like I did love you once, and you're the father of my children. Like I know what could happen to you if that came out, and that could come back to us or whatever, right? Right, or or just mm -hmm. like hey, like you know, you're you're still the father of my children. Like you still need to raise, you still need to be here for, here for these girls. Like, yeah. Okay, but there were there was a scene if you remember, where the 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 new girlfriend is talking to 
Junior, right? Isn't that? Oh, that I thought. Was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, who is that actress? She's from. That's. Fuck, one she's of from the Mara Rooney, sisters. Rooney, Rooney, Rooney Mara. That's no, her no, sister. No, Kate Mara. Kate Mara. It's her. Kate yeah. Mara. She's from go. that okay. show. What the fuck is it called? The fucking superhero show on Amazon. Oh, the boys. Yeah, the boys. Yeah, that's oh, right. There you go. Oh, that's where she I is. Like, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. No, I, I remember. <laughs> she's like the new girl um, in the first season. I don't know. Yeah, she's yeah, in House of Cards. That's season one. one. But yeah. anyway, th they're when they're having the conversation, the girlfriend and Junior are having the conversation, and she's like, "What, what am I? Am I? Is he ever going to settle down? And <laughs> like, is there something wrong with me?" And she's like, "Well, no, you're good enough." Mm, like, yeah. I just kind of feel like maybe. Maybe she, I don't it's know like if she it's not knows exactly. Kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I don't know if she knows oh. exactly, but she maybe she suspects or. It didn't come off to me she... that they knew at all, personally, yeah. like at all at all. All right, so um, let's get into rounding thoughts. Do we have any other random little tidbits that we want to touch on? One really quick that I thought was was kind of beautiful. Um, reading some trivia on this. So a week into the start of the film's shoot, two crew members came out. They were inspired by the film and kind of helped them to be like, "Hey, I'm I'm good with with who I am," and so that's quite a cool. Were, were there that's were cool. there other people that like kind of were famously inspired to come out because of this movie? I I don't, I don't know, know specifically, but I mean, it definitely couldn't hurt yeah. unless they were afraid of 1960s mobs, you know. No, I get that. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> um, uh, maybe a, some of, something else that occurred to me was. So there's a book by uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, who's a very famous Colombian author, he's like probably the most famous Latin American author, called Love in the Time of Cholera. And it's also kind of one of these epic romances um, where, you know, it's like a, a daughter of an important, you know, rich family, uh, a suitor who's trying, who falls in love with the daughter, they fall in love with each other, but then they, they can't be together because he's not he comes from kind of a poor family and then the whole novel is kind of about the way he works himself up to be in a position to marry her but it never really happens you know anyway i don't know there were very similar themes i actually googled brokeback mountain love in the time of cholera just to see if anyone had like made that connection yeah and yeah. I, I think i'm the only one but <laughs> anyway write an article a, well here it is now <laughs> Make yeah. it's, video a really good, it's a really it's a really good book i think there's a lot of thematic overlap um there was a movie made with javier bardem and i think it's penelope cruz or maybe it was salma hayek i can't remember mm -hmm. oh that's bad i'm confusing them anyway but yeah. um that's not very good i'm not gonna recommend that but um <laughs> uh cool book and interesting interesting connection uh one little thing uh this movie won the academy award for best original score from Gustavo Santa, Santa ya, lo ya, oh, ya, oh, I who know who also oh. does the music for The Last of Us. Okay, let's take my one facts. One and two. Santo Alaya. Take my facts. Facts. That was my one big hitter, bro. When I saw dude, his name, and, I was like, and, it and makes James so Virgin, much my sense. favorite. Cool. Dude, oh, dude so that dude is a really He's amazing so musician from Argentina. And he was in some like weird prog rock bands in the 70s. <laughs> and all their shit <laughs> is amazing. Is so, it? Yeah. Damn, listen. Shout out to him. Yeah. No, I, but Bro I, Brokeback Mountain did do really well, like as far as awards go. Like they won. Um, Ang Lee, I think, won best, best director. Picture. They didn't win best yeah, picture, that was like but a controversy, it was like wasn't a it? super upset. They lost to Crash, two thousand four, and like a Crash. Movie. Yeah, yeah, crash, and like everyone was just like, movie. what? The hell? And then I think uh, Heath Ledger was maybe also robbed of best actor as well for that, dude. Crash is a garbage movie, terrible movie. I will fucking like knife fight with anyone who thinks otherwise. Oh God, we'll go. and no, not that I, I care I, about I, the I'll Oscars. you up or... on that. No, I've never seen it. <laughs> <laughs> not, not like not that I give a shit about the Oscars, right? Who gives a fuck about a goddamn Oscar? But yeah. um, that is a travesty. I mean, that is a complete travesty. Yeah. I don't know what other movies came out that year, but that movie winning Best Picture is some bullshit. Yeah, well, it was the odds, so probably nothing great. I mean, if we're being honest. <laughs> but um, all right, let's let's jump into our ratings for this. Does anyone want to go first? Uh, I'll do it, I guess. Uh, James will do it. James got um, it. Yeah. Okay. So, 
I think um, initially, I, I, I don't know, I, I, I had this built up idea. I've been wanting to watch this movie for years. This actually was my choice for this week. Um, I'd heard that the acting was amazing and there was there was sparks of amazing acting. But then there was sparks of really weird facial uh, <laughs> stuff that Strange that mouth. sometimes yeah. that sometimes took me out of it. Um, going back to what I was saying earlier, uh, I I I I don't know. I wanted I wanted a little bit more romance, even though I felt like the movie was a little long winded. I feel like um, Scooby Doo character, what's her name? Velma. Velma. Oh. When, when I, I feel the like actual her, actress. I, don't I mean, yeah, yeah. I don't know what her her. I'm sorry, but um, wait, wait. I feel like that was like it didn't need to be in the movie. I think they could have. Uh, this movie could have benefited from a bunch of montages, and it would have been mm. okay. I think. I think. I think the passing of time was somewhat confusing because I don't think the makeup was there. I, I they gave Heath Ledger like a shitty haircut to make him look old. He had like a couple but he wrinkles. looked like he enough. looked like the same age as his daughter at the end. Like I was like <laughs> He was ah. only four years older than her. So Yeah, he was only four yeah. years older than her. So it was like it it, it was like yeah. okay they needed a little bit more money in the in the makeup department i think yeah because like the know. daughter the actress for the daughters changed like every time you saw them and like they just yeah. looked the same it was really weird yeah. you almost yeah. said it james too what did you, i say you almost said it you were getting ready to say it and you didn't say it I'm, I'm <laughs> okay uh, okay <laughs> Go ahead, um, keep going. Keep going. uh yeah so like initial like scenes just very intense some some people could say it was fucking intense <laughs> Any, anybody yeah no. yeah okay, okay. yeah okay. um yeah I, it's, it, it, those 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 scenes made you like whoa whoa it's the, there's a lot going on here is yeah. for me for me it was it was the thoughts of is this lust is this love like what's going on i'm like damn he's going in raw he's he's licking his hand like it's very intense, very intense yeah, yeah, scene, yeah. and I'm like, this isn't anal sex like a like a thing? Don't you have to like prep for like a week? Like you don't eat anything, <laughs> but I guess I guess uh, they Born just they just do moment, it. Man. I mean, just boys being boys. Um, <laughs> yeah, so like, James, if you oh, really quick, if you think that that gay couples have to not eat, they have to fast for a week before they have sex. I, I don't know. So that's, that's, that's this is this is why I wanted a gay person. No, on that's the not show. what happened. Describe it to me. What the <laughs> process? Had a lot Jesus of Christ. interesting conversation. So they should have had a. They should have had a diagram next to like what they were doing. Just like a biological yeah. diagram. Uh, yeah, there's a thing called uh, a dirty dill. Uh, we could talk about anyway, that. Yeah. Continue. Animas <laughs> exist. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so like um, not not that any of those parts retracted from the movie. I think it was it was just a little long winded. I maybe it's just my personality. I, I I I did feel empathy for them, but I spent a lot of the time just being fucking annoyed with them. Sometimes, <laughs> like I was just like, "Come on, guys! Like, just just do your little side side fucks. Like, it's all good." And 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 the the Mexico thing, I I felt like I don't know. I would like to pick a gay person's brain on this. Like, I I think it's very stereotypical that like gays or these sex crazed fiends they will go to any means go down to mexico yeah you know just to do those things so I, I don't know i i felt like that retracted from the love that they had and and i don't know i, I mean I was it was say, real quick if I it can, was very one-sided yeah earlier when you brought that up i was gonna say i feel like that's just his character like it's not like trying to say something about like all gay people it's just like all that gays? one yeah, person yeah was yeah. fucking everything that moved it felt like like also also you know everyone, what I, mean? I mean i think it was not an uncommon thing for straight people or any kind of people to go to mexico and to do illegal things i mean that was a pretty <laughs> popular i mean yeah. you know i didn't I live around spot. here what was that <laughs> like I mean, the 70s or the 80s yeah, yeah like, i think yeah. that was a pretty yeah. normal thing but but yeah no, he even enough. he says something about yeah. making a pass at someone's wife and like it just felt like it wasn't even like just he was making a pass at the Anna Ferris's husband. No, right, but he but says he it, something. He pres- oh, you see, just like flipping it for the no, story. No, no, no. But he, yeah, exactly. He presents mm-hmm. it to Anna oh. as 
Yeah. Like, oh yeah, I'm having this oh, thing because with the, guy, with the guy's yeah. his wife or whatever. Right? Okay, I, it's I, not that. I guess I and, just that's what I, he was going after. And he's sort of know. like poking. He's like sort of prodding Ennis. He wants he wants to mm. get a reaction out of him. And I yeah. don't know if I don't I don't know if he ever does get a reaction. But anyways, uh, cinematography was great. The music was great. Um, what else? What else can I say? What else can I say? I, uh, the the time skip stuff is probably like my my worst thing about the movie. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's an eight. Okay. Out of ten. Sure. Nice for me. I saw it eight out of ten. Coming from James. Uh, did you want to take it over next turn or? Yeah, if I could. All right, go ahead. Um, I don't know. I just hearing all the different the word stigma all this other shit about this movie before watching it Ligma. <laughs> really harmed the first little tiny part of the movie because i was like fuck this movie's really long like what's going on it was kind of slow at the beginning but like almost immediately i was just you, it just pulls you in so slow and you forget that you're watching a fucking movie dude i don't know at least i did i was like mm -hmm. i am just living next to these people watching them fucking just go through all these things and it's it was so powerful to me like throughout the whole movie dude the time skips were a little weird but like it wasn't that bad to me i guess i don't know it made it yeah. that much more impactful that like their affair went on for so fucking like 20 fucking years dude that's crazy years, yeah. so like i don't know like you guys or you guys are mentioning like it's kind of like a movie about regret or whatever like I kind of get that, but I mostly, like, for me, like, what I took is, like, it's a story about, like, loneliness, dude. Like, Ennis wow. can't yeah. fucking, like, get love out of anyone, it feels like. He's just so alone, like, since he was a kid, like, he has that whole story where he's talking about his brother and sister, like, moving on with their lives, and he's like, there was no more room for me. Like, he just kind of got kicked to the curb a little bit, and he's just kind of been like that for a while going through the motions like any other man would just finding a wife having kids whatever you know and even at the end dude like that i feel like that's mostly why i was fucking crying throughout the whole end because he was so fucking alone it just hurt me so bad yeah that little trailer yeah like he's i don't know yeah his daughter going over there and shit was fucking like oh did it was good shit but the yeah. music dude when i saw gustavo at the end in the credits i was like no fucking because <laughs> it is very similar and equally as powerful as the music in the last of us both of them like that man is f insane <laughs> he's so good like yeah, he plays the guitar on, and shit like it's so cool dude like no just bad. these simple little fucking guitarists are just so good like every time they would get up like meet up together like the same riff would play and i was just like fuck here we go like feels and just start pouring in you know like perfect choice for this movie yeah this movie is gorgeous like the a lot of landscape shots were really nice you know the cg sheep were a little weird not some parts but... <laughs> cg yeah some of them were not all of them oh there was some that that were damn, I <laughs> to me wow. I didn't even... I but didn't uh notice. um yeah the i i didn't I really didn't know what this movie was about. I thought it kind of was like a short span of time, all on the mountain, like only two characters, like all this stuff. And like, there was so many, f I saw the actors list when I, before I watched it, I was like, what the yeah. fuck? When are they gonna come in? Like, I didn't understand. It's kind of stacked. Yeah. 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 And Hathaway doesn't come in until halfway through the movie. Yeah, so. and I was like, David Harbour? Like all these people, I was like, that's crazy. I don't know, I was just waiting for them to show up and it would be like these small parts that just added up to yeah. just being like a really cool story. <clears throat> But, um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like it is it is a little long, but I feel like it is deserving of its runtime. Like, there's no things that I would take out of it, necessarily. Everything makes sense to me in the moment. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, just reading about the actors after, like, how much they put into it and stuff, it's like, fuck, man, this, this movie is actually insane. Like, yeah. what it did for these kind of movies, like, in, like, the grand scheme or no like the public eye or whatever right yeah it's just like can't be understated man like 
this movie was honestly very tame for what I thought it was going to be because, like, it was kind of, like, the first big one, right? Because, like, nowadays, yeah. like, it's a lot more common, you know? You'll see a lot more, um, like, gay and, like, all this other other kinds of relationships just throughout, like, a lot more subtle now and stuff. So, I don't know. I guess I was, I was just waiting for all the fucking gay sex. I don't know why... That's the stigma that sucks that that's what they right. call it. Yeah. Because it's not what <laughs> that yeah, movie it sucks. is. Yeah. yeah. It was demonized for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'm going a little long, so I guess I'll stop there. Fuck. I don't know, man. I was. I started at one thing and this make conversations making it go up more. I'm just going to throw it at nine, dude. Fuck it. Straight up. Nice. 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 A solid nine out of ten from Taryn. If I cry, it's fucking Hall of Fame, straight up. <laughs> For me. I think I'm ready to go next. If you don't mind going last, Alonso. No problem. Cool. All right. Yeah. So my rating on this film, I think, definitely has a lot to do with completely exceeding expectations. I think when this movie come came out in 2005, you know, I was in middle school and it came out as the gay cowboy movie and. You know, like, sadly, it was kind of a joke to to a lot of the people in my age group at the time. It was, you, it was kind of, it was really made fun of. And, and I never really watched it. I never really, like, had any kind of desire to watch it. But, you know, that's why I was, as we've kind of mentioned throughout this episode, is that I was a little bit scared of, of doing this episode for Pride. But, like, after, after this conversation, after, like, really thinking about the movie, like, this, I don't know if we could have picked a better movie for this. Like... For four straight people to talk about <laughs> about pride issues, right? Like, yeah. this movie d just delivered it perfectly, and it, one of one of my favorite elements that this movie does over and over again is the blurred lines and the ambiguity to like what is actually happening, right? Like, where exactly are Jack and Ennis's sexuality, right? Like. We see that this movie is, or excuse me, that these characters are, are on this kind of spectrum really before like that spectrum kind of exists, right? Like, you know, are they are they gay? Are they straight? Are they bi? Like they're, they're somewhere in between all three of these things, right? And they did that so well. And also like the character's relationship or, or um, the supporting character's relationship with the main characters is just like how they kind of perceive them and, you know, like when we were talking about Anne Hathaway, Anne Hathaway's character kind of saying what happened, what actually happened to Jack, just such beautiful directing that Ang Lee chose to use two different takes from two different really deliveries or kind of interpretations of what Anne Hathaway's character felt about what happened. Like that alone was just so masterfully done and you know the the little uh, the little subtleties that were thrown in where Jack's shirt is over uh, Ennis's and then at the end it's switched. Like I don't know. There's there's so much beauty, so in much this care movie. put into and, it, dude. Like oh. and and yeah. And, and as Taryn was saying, like the actors, dude, Jake Gyllenhaal and Heath Ledger. Like even if you didn't absolutely love the performances that they put on screen, the work that they put on this. The, the the thought that they put into this at that time to just be like no this is this movie needs to be completely respectful to this community and like I, I read something that Heath Ledger was completely shutting down any kind of homophobic jokes that were happening around the time of the movie being released because he's like that's not no like we're not tolerating that that's not what this movie is and I think anyone who thinks that this movie is the gay cowboy movie you need to fucking watch it. Like, yeah. You need to just watch this movie. And I don't know. I, I honestly think your your perception of the entire film will be changed. And I think you'll come out loving it. Because because at the end of the day, this is a movie about two people falling in love and struggling to be with each other. And it's so beautifully done. It it's for me it's it's easily in the Hall of Fame. I don't think we'll get there, but in my heart it is. This is a 9.2 out of 10 for me. Nice. So, Alonso. Right. Okay. Take it over. Right. Okay, so... Um, I was thinking, what am I going to say that you guys haven't already said? <laughs> and I came Sucks up going last. 
No, okay. it's all good. I'm good. I'm good. Um, so we didn't talk at all about the director, Ang Lee, and all the movies he's made. Um, the Hulk. Where they fit Tiger, in. Hidden Dragon. Look, even the Hulk Jenna. is like, even his Hulk is like kind of interesting. But um, <laughs> so for, for, for those of you guys out there that are interested in more of his stuff, uh, I think Crouching Tiger is like kind of a masterpiece. Um, if you haven't seen that, go check that out. Um, it's like a beautiful kind of wire foo movie with an amazing sort of romance story. Um, I think that Life of Pi is, I mean, I'll say I think kind of highly underrated. Um, I saw it in the theater and I was really kind of blown away. Um, he has another movie called Eat, uh, Eat, Drink, Man, Woman that I saw a long time ago. He makes really interesting movies. His, he's all over the place. That's what I admire about him. You know, it's a, a lot of directors and a lot of filmmakers that, like, they one trick ponies. Yeah, they figure out one thing and they kind of stick with it. You know, yeah. and sometimes that's cool. You know, maybe like a Tarantino like comes to Wes mind. Wes Anderson, and, yeah. You know, like Wes Anderson, etc. Yeah. But um, he doesn't give a fuck, man. He'll make a movie about cowboys having a gay relationship in Wyoming, and then he'll make a movie about. Wire foo, you know, like sword fighting himself. romance. Then he'll make a Will Smith doppelganger <laughs> movie. Then he'll make a movie about an Indian kid who survives a shipwreck with a tiger. I mean, you know, it's just uh, yeah, he that's really cool. Fuck, so so go, go check out his movies. Um, then I guess the other thing I would say is um, there are before this movie there were a lot of American movies about gay relationships and had themes gay themes and had different tones it's just most of them almost all of them weren't mainstream so um a, a, one movie that i think we didn't talk about that comes to mind is uh hedwig and the angry inch by a filmmaker named todd haynes go check that out it's an amazing beautiful movie um i saw it in the movie theater when i just started going to college in 1999 i want to say and it blew my mind. Such a cool movie. Um, there's Gus Van Sant, who has made a whole lot of movies, including like um, Milk, which is like the Harvey Milk biopic. Um, he, yeah, he's made um, some amazing movies, um, kind of well-known queer cinema. Go check him out. There's a guy named Greg Araki, who I've been watching his movies since um, the 90s. So he made this movie called The Doom Generation. Um, and it was, a, it was, had a really cool box at the video store. Again, I'm dating myself, but at the video, you know, like when I was a kid, I made my movie renting decisions by the cover and on the box of the video store. Mm -hmm. Right. So I had a really cool box. It was one of the first Rose McGowan movies. Um, and then he's made some amazing movies since then. Um, so go check his movies out. Like there's, there's so much out there and um if this sort of stuff interests you like there's so much to explore um just to build on what you guys are talking about mm -hmm. i i really um i again i think this was this was made for a straight audience um i think what it set out to do it did and it did it really effectively it's what again what i love about it is it's not a movie that has american an American aesthetic, right? Um, it's kind of slow. Like, yeah, I'm actually surprised you guys did hammer it more on how slow it goes because <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of shots that linger. I remember there was a shot at the beginning um, on Ennis where the train like kind of cuts through the shot, right? Like, so you know, the, there's a train that yeah. cuts through, and you see him kind of standing against the office like smoking a cigarette yeah yeah and i was like thinking to myself like like this will bore people <laughs> <laughs> i i know this will bore people but um but that's like just more that's more american cinema right like uh, again you know like you go watch movies from around the world and they don't mind lingering on a shot and they don't feel like they need to like you know you know, entertain you with like explosions every five seconds. And like, you know, people are a little bit more comfortable with like making, you know, 
art that pays off slowly. Um, so honestly, for me, that's actually a plus. Um, I love seeing movies that take their time and that pay off. And some of the best movies I've ever seen are movies that are slow build and pay off into something. And, and you understand the mechanics of like, hey, it's not necessarily like, you know, capturing your full attention 100% of the time always. Um, because there's a reason, right? It, pay, it pays off eventually. Um, you know, again, the cinematography is amazing. I think, yeah, we mentioned the music, Gustavo Santoalaya, who's a um, uh, motherfucker of a musician from Argentina. Go check him out. Um, you know, I'm trying to think of, you know, bad things to say about the movie. I thought the performances were great. Um, I mean, I'll push back against maybe some of the kind of, you know, um, queer critique of the movie. Um, from the standpoint of, I mean, it, it helped me build empathy. I don't know what that says about like the larger culture. I don't know what that says about me, Yeah, but you know, this, you know, like this was like a, this was a movie that like, um, you know, it just kind of resets the conversation in many ways. And, and around this time, like, you know, the right, right wing was using a lot of these themes is like a wedge to get people to vote for them, you know, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. and, and like, it's like when you watch a movie like this, you know, all that stuff like fades away, all the propaganda, all the, all the sort of lies and the, all the, the kind of structure that keeps like people down and living in secrecy and hiding something. And, and for what? It's just, it's a misery for everyone. Um, so I, I I'm not going to take it outside of its, context this is like what 2005 right yeah is that right so it's like you know bush bush was the president you know the iraq war um uh you know kind of republicans ran the show and they used these things to to wedge people into voting for them and and fear use fear um and so i feel like this movie probably did some amazing work in resetting all that stuff which is a positive yeah I'm, I'm not like shilling for any political party here i'm just saying that like to me yeah. like <laughs> living in like living in fear um you know for for being the way you are um and, and you're not hurting other people right um like that's like abhorrent to me right on a personal level mm -hmm. so so when, when, when you get this kind of story that resets that um, and takes you out of all the propaganda and all the lies and, and just resets it around something that I think is universal that anyone can understand. Um, you know, I'm 40 years old. I have regrets. You know, anyone that says they don't have regrets is lying. I don't care. <laughs> and, um, you know, you, you know, you go through things, you do things in life or you, you don't do things that you want to do or that you, you, but, you know, you sort of rationalize that you can't do them and um that that's something you can i can clearly relate to like you'd even take all the take all of the kind of like sex themes and just kind of focus on even like the sort of forbidden nature or like or like you, you know someone trying to not being able to express themselves the way they should that's something everyone can relate to and it's it's universal right so you know all that said, I, I mean, I, I think it's a, I think it's a, I think it's a fantastic movie, and I love that it, it has a style that's not like. I love that it has a style that doesn't maybe fit in with like the rest of American cinema, and of course, it was made by someone not from the United States. I'm not, I'm not kind of, yeah. kind of surprised about that at the end of the day. <laughs> um, shoot, guys, I, I mean. You're teasing us a lot, so what's the score? <laughs> I mean, score? I'm gonna say I'm gonna say it's a nine, and and I hate to say that because like I feel like it's not Hall of Fame now, and it it, it probably should be. Like in my opinion, it should be. Um, <laughs> but you know, it's I'm like really sorry. hard for me. No, to we'll, give we'll blame me. James for that. Don't don't worry. About yeah. it. It's so hard for me uh, to give a movie like like. No, yeah. Like I don't know how to give. I don't know. Maybe this is my. I don't know how to. Instead of I don't know how to quit you. I don't know how to give a movie a ten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. I don't All know right. How well, to do that, no. 
Uh, that brings us to a collective 8.8, .8, just shy of the Fumbler Hall of Fame, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Um, this this shit happened to me last time. <laughs> we would love exact same thing. The Fumbler Hall of Fame, man. I know, it's rough. It's so rough. Oh, but it is what it is, man. and that's, that's the show. Uh, we'd love to know what you guys think about this movie. For those of you watching us live at twitch.tv slash filmfumblers, leave us uh your your ratings in the in the chat and for those of you listening to the podcast um let us know hit us up on any of our socials find all of those at filmfumblers.com we will see you guys next week on july 3rd for independence day so stay tuned for that but until next time guys happy pride and cheers cheers, cheers. bye bye